Inhabiting an intensely magical world, the fairies have made a huge impact on Gilinor in ways that you may not even know about. But who are the fairies? What do they do for Gilinor? And what could stand in their way while they did it? I'm Aris Galaxy Shark and this is RuneScape Lore. The original homeworld of the small, humanoid creatures is unknown, but they once inhabited a world formed by the elder goddess Bic in an attempt to create the perfect world. This world may have been made fairly recently compared to the other ancient worlds such as Freneske, as it was at the very least inhabitable. At some point before the first age of Gilinor, the fairies arrived at Xenaris and made it their home. Xenaris is actually the moon of Gilinor and was found to have incredible magical properties. This magic was what convinced the fairies to stay, and it would later be discovered that this magic came from a dormant portal, something that, when used correctly, could transport the user through the universe. The Fairy Queen was particularly adept in magical methods and understood how to harness the power beneath their feet. She created the Fairy Rings and scattered them through Xenaris, Gilinor and other nearby planes. These rings made it so that a fairy with weaker magical abilities could still navigate the Nexus of Planes as it was called by the Coordinator of Xenaris. After seeing the destruction of his world and beginning his journey around the universe, Guthix found Xenaris. By this point, the fairies had already been living there for many years, but had been doing so with no god. It isn't entirely clear what Guthix did for the fairies, but most of them did choose to follow him. That said, it's possible that the fairies were given immense responsibility and a huge role in the progression of Gilinor, and in return, Guthix would provide for them and protect them. The fairies actually control the weather on Gilinor, and as an extension of this, are responsible for the changing seasons, with the Coordinator, a rather antisocial fairy, leading these operations. Much like Gilinor, Xenaris is not home to a single species. Instead, there is an abundance of life. The notable life forms that share Gilinor's moon with the fairies are the Mind Slayers, strange tree like beings that act as gatekeepers to the most dangerous or protected areas of the moon. The otherworldly beings, strange creatures that have a completely unknown origin, and the Zygomites, living, mushroom esque creatures that often become mutated and aggressive, but are otherwise docile and peaceful. The other main species native to Xenaris is the Tanglefoot, a semi sentient plant creature that lives under the main town in a shady grove. It seems as though, for thousands of years, the fairies lived peaceful lives with little conflict building an ideal society where everybody has their own role. This peace would end partway through the Fifth Age. On Gilinor, the adventurer had learnt of a magical staff crafted from the Dramon tree below Entrana, and this staff allowed the human to use fairy rings on Gilinor and arrive at a sort of master ring found on Xenaris. The World Guardian's arrival on Xenaris would come at the perfect time, as Xenaris was about to face a threat like nothing else before. As it turned out, the biggest threat to the fairies did not come from outside. Instead, it came from the corrupt and narcissistic Fairy Godfather. The Fairy Godfather had planned to overthrow the Queen and become the ruler of Xenaris himself, and this involved a rather complex combination of ultimately unsuccessful plots. Every so often, the Tanglefoot mentioned earlier would exit its shady grove and attack the vulnerable fairies. The Queen, being the protector of her people, would step in to save them, wielding a magical pair of secateurs. These secateurs were special. They had been enchanted in such a way that they could actually damage the Tanglefoot, who was, in general, incredibly resilient to all other attacks, pushing them back into their grove. In one encounter, soon after the adventurer arrived on Xenaris, the Queen was infected by some strange illness, losing her secateurs in the process. This had all actually been part of the Fairy Godfather's plan. While the Queen was away, under the intense medical care of Fairy Nuff, the Fairy Godfather was employed as a temporary ruler of Xenaris. When spoken to, he would explain to the adventurer what had happened to the Queen, and suggested that the human should reclaim the Queen's tool. After a long and arduous journey across Gilinor, the adventurer managed to replicate the enchantment of the Queen's secateurs, and defeat the Tanglefoot with them, reclaiming what had belonged to the Queen, and returning it to the Fairy Godfather as per their instructions. While it seemed as though the problem had been solved, it was only actually just getting started. Soon after this happened, 
The Fairy Godfather, who had now been revealed to be the leader of the Fairy Mafia, attacked the Queen and her nurse, alongside his lackeys Fat Rocco and Slim Louie. This was the event that revealed the nefarious side of the Fairy Godfather, and sparked preparations from the true leader. The Queen and her most loyal followers fled to an isolated location on Xenaris. Here, Fairy Nuff continued to tend to the Ill Queen, and preparations for war began. Fairy Nuff had also decided that the adventurer should be involved. She left a hidden message in her grotto that led the adventurer through a combination of fairy ring teleports until they reached the fairy resistance headquarters. Here, the adventurer learned of the true severity of the queen's illness and was informed of the measures required to save her. This discovery would send them off on another adventure, this time taking them far from Gilinor to planes such as the Gorak Plane and the Cosmic Plane. This was done to gather the ingredients and brew a magic essence potion, a concoction that would restore the Queen to her full strength. It also became apparent that the Godfather had not returned the Queen's secateurs to their rightful owner, so the soon-to-be World Guardian stealthily acquired them from the antagonists. Finally, the Queen would be cured and would wake from her strange coma. While this had been going on, the Fairy Godfather had brought hordes of orcs to Xenaris. Apparently, he had formed an alliance with them, and decided that they would be a far more useful populace than the generally pacifistic and peaceful fairies. After considerable thought, a plan was formed. A crack team of fairy soldiers had managed to rot a tooth of each of the orc generals in the fairy godfather's army. Apparently, there was some sort of magical spell that would allow the tooth to, after being removed, be planted into the ground and then grow into an ivory clone of the orc, one that would fight on the side of the fairies rather than against them. After another quick trip across the world, the adventurer acquired these rotten teeth using an advanced tooth extractor and returned to their new allies. This marked the beginning of the end of the fairy godfather. Alongside the tooth fairy, the adventurer made their way to Orcs Rift, the portal on Xenaris that was used to bring the orcs to the world. Quickly, the tooth fairy planted the teeth while the adventurer fought off hordes of orcs. Eventually, the fairy godfather himself arrived but he could not be dispatched of quite as easily. Due to a powerful shield he had cast over himself, the adventurer was not actually able to directly harm him. This was no problem though. Part of the enchantment used to create the ivory orcs also gave them the ability to break through this shield. Thankfully, by the time the godfather arrived, the ivory orcs had just about come to life and were ready to take on the nefarious foe. They broke the shield and allowed the adventurer to harm their opponent, pushing them back into Orc's Rift, where he would never be seen again. With the Queen healed, the Orcs defeated, and the Fairy Mafia removed from power, the Fairies could once again live their peaceful lives under the rule of a worthy monarch. The contribution made by the adventurer did not go unnoticed. They were taught how to use the Fairy Rings without needing the magical Draman Staff, and were also granted free access to the Xenaris Market, a location that is highly exclusive and normally expensive to enter. Since then, it seems that the fairies have continued to live as they had done before. Some fairies have been seen around Gilinor in places like the Lost Grove, but it seems as though they will remain on Xenaris for the most part, being nothing but a myth to many Gilinorians. With that, there's little else to say, and of course that means this video is coming to an end. Thank you all so much for watching, and I really hope you found this video quite interesting, if you did, Make sure you hit that like button, it'd be really appreciated and it helps me see that you're liking what I'm doing. Once again, thank you all so much for watching. I've been Aaron's Galaxy Shark and I'll see you in the next video.